the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Excelsius Deo. Et in terra pax hominibus. Bone voluntatis. Aramus te. Benedicimus te. Adoramus te. Glorificamus te, gratias hocimus tibi, prod germaniam gloriam tua, domine Deus rex celestis, Deus pater Amen. Um. 
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who called the Virgin, Blessed Miriam Teresa, to the height of charity on earth, to prepare her for eternal life in heaven, make us, strengthened by her intercession, imitate her humility so as to arrive at the same perfection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who recommends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord recommends. If only you would put up with a little foolishness from me. Please put up with me, for I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God, since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We gather this evening to celebrate the feast day of one of Bayonne's own citizens, Blessed Miriam Teresa Demjanovich, who was born in 1901, just about 20 streets north of here um, in Bayonne. And it's a great privilege for us to be able to do that because as far as we know, we are the only parish in the world named after her and to have her as our patroness. We just got done watching the EWTN special, or the biography, if you want to say it that way, or documentary on Blessed Miriam Teresa. And it really was quite touching to see, first of all, images of the church where she was baptized, St. John the Baptist, and then St. Vincent's parish up on the north side of town, and to realize that God had truly worked miracles in his town, and that he really had his eye on a special little girl, a little girl that was born here to a Ruthenian Wright family, and that he intended to raise her up and make her a saint for all of us to look up to and really take pride in of knowing that one of our own is truly in heaven with the certainty of God's approval. The gospel that we heard this evening talks about the story between Martha and Mary. Teresa, when she was young, always had a very deep relationship with God. And she wanted, to, first of all, to go to a Carmel. She wanted to be a Carmelite to follow in the footsteps of her favorite saint, St. Teresa of Avila. And of course, that was the contemplative life that she felt that she was called to. As time would unfold though, and she was, went out to convent station to St. Elizabeth's College, she realized that ultimately, after she had been turned down by the Carmelites because of her poor eyesight, that she couldn't go there and she'd have to look for someplace else. And so she says that one day when she saw the sisters renew their vows on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, that she realized that God was really calling her to not a contemplative life, but to an active life, a life of the Sisters of Charity of Convent Station. But what I'm sure she came to realize though, and maybe she knew this before even any of us would have even thought of it, 
is that still, as an active sister, teaching in schools and doing all kinds of things, that she still could lead a contemplative life. And that really, I think, was the hallmark of Teresa, that she had a union with God that was beyond anything that we could possibly imagine, perhaps, but certainly is what our great desire is, to be so united to him that we radiate his love in this world. Teresa was very adamant that ultimately she was going to do God's will in her life. This coming Sunday, in the reading of the gospel, we hear the story where Jesus is trying to tell the disciples, um, Philip says, well, show us the Father, and Philip, Jesus says, but how long have I been with you? And you, I tell you that if whatever you see of me, you see the Father. And Teresa understood that it wasn't just Jesus who radiated the will of God or revealed God to us, the Father, but she understood that every Christian was supposed to do that because every Christian's will is to be united to Christ in such perfection that he is then manifest in our own area here, in our own world that we live in. That's what Christianity is, is becoming a saint and becoming a, a version of Christ here that the world looks to and finds hope in. And so Teresa was very much interested in negating her own desires and her own will and doing the will of the Father because she knew that that's what she was called to do. She even says from a very young age, she says to her confessor, I knew that I was called to something special, but I had no idea what it was, and I needed direction. And so ultimately, the spiritual director then helped her and guided her along the way. But as I said earlier, she was adamant that she was going to do God's will and not her own. And of course, she was a beautifully humble woman. She died when she was 26 years old, and so she didn't live long, but the years that she left us were very, really very quite, quite striking. I mentioned earlier that one of the th reasons that she didn't, was not accepted by the Carmelites was because of her very bad eyesight. And it seems that vision was something very important to Teresa. She mentions in her biography, and we're just going to read a little paragraph to you, it's very, very brief, but I think if you listen to the words of her own writing, you'll hear the beautiful humility of a young woman who is in love with God, who wants to do his will, but really is not interested in expressing herself but doing what it is that he would like her to do. And so the religious know that if you want to do the will in the convent or the monastery, whatever it is, that the will of the superior and the will of the spiritual director, whatever they tell you to do, is God speaking to you. And so she had bad eyesight, but yet there was something about that eyesight that was very important to her. And so she writes in one of her letters to her spiritual director, could I, Father, offer our dear Lord my eyes in favor of someone who needs sight more than I do. I did this once before when I was in college for the salvation of a soul. And our Lord replied by making me endure violent headaches daily for months. I was perfectly willing then, as I am now for him, to have made me blind. But again, your decision is also mine. Some people would say that because of the mystical characteristics that, G that Teresa possessed, I guess you could probably say that she could see God with her soul, and she realized that her physical eyes were not the most important part of her being, but really that she could use her soul and see God. And so it's interesting then that the miracle that was accepted for her beatification was a young little boy who was practically blind. He had macular degeneration in both eyes. And as he was given a little relic of her, a little memento, as they say, and he carried it home, he was able to look down then and see that what the memento was was just a little strand of hair. And he was cured in that moment. And ultimately, it was the reason that Teresa was, Blessed Miriam Teresa was beatified. And so she takes great care. She takes great love in looking after her own. And so today, Blessed Miriam Teresa, we ask you to look upon us to all of us here in this parish who have you as our patron saint or as a patroness, that you might look upon us and obtain for us God's many graces that we need to follow in your footsteps, to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross and follow after Jesus, so that someday we can all be joined together in heaven, around the heavenly throne, worshiping the Lamb, who truly laid down his life for us, who shed his blood so that all of us could be given that promise, that hope, of eternal life.
And now let's profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now I'd ask you to join me in praying the prayer for canonization, which is really the, the intention of this Mass, to ask our Heavenly Father to grant us a second miracle that would be recognized by the Church so that Blessed, Teresa, Blessed Miriam Teresa may not just be celebrated her life here in the province of New Jersey, but in the whole world. And so if you'll join me. Most Holy and Blessed Trinity, whom Sister Miriam Teresa loved so ardently, Grant that we, like her, may become ever more conscious of thy divine presence within our souls. We implore thee to show signs that thy humble servant enjoys glory with thee in heaven, and to hasten the day when we may render her a public tribute of our veneration and love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, Blessed Miriam Teresa, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis und Chariot Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Mortem Tuam, Annunciamus Domine, et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemu. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Miriam Teresa, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly for, to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Alleluia. There is one thing I ask 
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Miriam Teresa Demjanovic, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, Quia quem meruisti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia, Ora pro nobis Deum.